all doing well. I got some really good news, more evidence that the rapture is about to take place now. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians uh, verse chapter, chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, you brethren, by the, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, whom a Poses and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits, sitteth in the, the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you? I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of the, of the iniquities doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the, the brightness of his coming. Even him who coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying, lying wonders, and with all deliverance of uprighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the, the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the, the, the truth, but had pleasure in uprighteousness. Now, I want to point something out here in 2 Thessalonians. Um, right, if you go to in here where it says... Verse 3, it talks about shall not come except there come a falling away first. Now, I've seen this rapture video where this guy, I don't remember his name, he um, said more Christians, more people are leaving Jesus. They're falling away. They're leaving Jesus than are coming to Jesus. So we got the falling away. This guy was crying. He says, we're losing the battle. More people are falling away from Jesus. They're leaving Jesus. And more people than, than, than they're coming to Jesus. And he was crying and saying, we're losing the battle. We're not going to win this. So there again, the falling away has happened. That has to happen before we can go home. That happened. So, also I want to point out here, it also says in verse 7, 
For the mystery of the iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay, right there, it says, Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, I believe that's talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, I believe, is holding it back. He's taken out of the way. When we're taken out of the way, the Holy Spirit's taken out of the way. I believe that's what, what that's talking about right there. Holy Spirit that dwells in us, that God lives in us, it's taken out of the way. But what's interesting, if you read right here, it says, until be taken out of the way. And then the next sentence says, and then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So he can't be revealed, which I think and believe is the Antichrist, until we're taken out of the way. That's what it says. So now turn with me to Daniel 9. I've got some more interesting news. In Daniel 9, it says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many, for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the obibulation to cease, and for the overspreading of the abomination, he shall make it desolate even until the consumption and that determination shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, that's that's verse 27. Here's something interesting about verse 27. Um the deal of the century. We've got the deal of the century that's pre presented to Israel, the peace plan. Our government, the United States is pre presenting a peace plan for Israel. Now, it's interesting how it says and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the obibulation to cease. Well, he confirms a covenant for one week. I think it's talking about the Antichrist. And then in the, in the, in the midst of the week, he shall... And, the, and, it says, and, then, and, and then it says, and in the midst of, of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the obibulation to cease. So, so basically, one week is seven years. That's Jacob's trouble. You see, the Jews were first and the Gentiles were last in the beginning. Jesus came to the Jews. They rejected him. Well, not all of them, but, you know, some of them came to Jesus. But my, my point is, and then God, Jesus said, in the end, the Gentiles will be first and the Jews will be last. See, that's Jacob's trouble. That's not for us. We're out of here. So, so basically, I believe this is talking about the Antichrist. He can't make the peace deal of the century. The peace deal of the century can't go down until we're out of here. So that tells me that rapture is very close. And so, and, and just the other day, um, in Pittsburgh, a Jewish synagogue, some guy went crazy, killed 11 people, injured two, I think, even shot some cops, and he surrendered. You see, it's like the days of Noah. 
People are killing each other for no reason. In the days of Noah, God was sad. He was crying. He was, he was sorry that he made us. Because they were killing each other. It's like the days of Noah. This is not going to go on much longer. See, this is the way I think of this. It, I like cake. I don't know if you guys like cake. And you put icing on a cake. Well, you only need so much icing to get on a cake. The way I see this with all the evidence and all the prophecies coming to pass and the way the world is happening and all the, and the great sign, Revelation 12, and then what, what Jupiter did in Libra for 280 days, came out 11 days later. This is like a cake with icing. So much icing, icing, frosting is being put on the cake. It's falling off the cake. We don't need any more icing on the cake. It's, it's just piling icing on the cake. There's so much evidence that Jesus Christ is coming now that it's like, why are people denying and saying he's not coming now? I mean, the, the, the frost, the icing, we don't need any more icing on the cake. The, the, the cake, it's, it's rolling off the cake. There's so much evidence. If you look at the world today and all over the world and see and in China, they've made it, they've, they banned the Bible. You're not allowed to have a Bible. You're not allowed to get it on the internet. They won't let it be mailed. They banned the Bible. So all over the world, it's like, there's so much evidence that Jesus is coming now. It's like a cake. We don't need any more icing. It's rolling off. And here's what I think, you know, Jesus, I believe, is coming now. And you, if some people want to go around and say, what are you talking about? How can you say he's coming? How can you just say that? But I see all the evidence. And I think when he does come, and I think he's coming now, and you're going around saying he's not coming, and you know some people are doing that. And when he comes, you're going to have to explain to him why you didn't believe he was coming. And I think this is like the parable of the 10 vir virgins. Five were ready. Five weren't. See, five went into the chamber. Five were ready. They went in. Then the door was shut. And then the five that didn't went in, they said, let us in. And then he said, keep watch. So there's no way he could have been talking to the five that went in. The door was shut. They were ready. The five virgins were ready. So in that parable, how can anyone say that, oh, look there, it says, keep watch. You don't know when he's coming. Well, the five went in, the door was shut. The five that didn't go in, he was talking to them. He couldn't have been talking to the, one, the five that went in. So, just looking at everything going on in the world, he's coming now. And I just can't see how people want to say he's not coming. There's so much evidence piling up. It's like a cake. We don't need any more frosting. We got the peace till the century. And I don't think the peace till the century is going to go through until we're gone, until the rapture happens. Until Jesus comes and gets his bride. We're his bride. He's got two brides, a Gentile bride and a Jew bride. He loves them both the same. He's going to have, at the end of the day, he will have both brides. But he gets the first bride, which actually it's the second bride. He's going to get the Gentile bride first. And then after seven years, he's going to get the Jew bride. And at the end of the day, he's going to have both brides. And he's in charge. Jesus he created heaven and earth. He created everything. And he's coming now. It, it's all about to be over with. And it's exciting. And looking at the world, most you could get, if you're lucky, 100 years. And then you die. Why would anyone want to die? Dying is not fun. 
See, Jesus conquered death. He conquered it. And he took our sins away. He died on the cross for our sins. He holds the keys to death and Hades. Basically, death and hell. And there's a mystery. Some of us are not going to die. I mean, a lot of people believe you have to die to go to be with Jesus. I don't think so. Because, you know, you don't. He's coming to get us. And wouldn't it be better to not ever have to die? Never experience the sting of death? I mean, why would you want to die when Jesus could come and get you right now? It's right now. Too much is going on. Literally. I just don't see the rapture not happening in this year. This year is not going to pass without that. I think this thing is about to kick off. And you have two choices. Come to Jesus or have the worst seven years of your life with fire raining down from heaven. No food to eat. I mean, it's just going to be so bad. And I really don't care how much food you save up. You're not going to have enough. It's, it's going to be bad. And there's, it, yes, it is an escape plan. Come to Jesus. He'll save you. He'll keep you from the hour of trial that's going to come on the whole world. Just accept Jesus into your heart. Accept him as your personal savior. And then pray to him every day. Talk to him. Just pray to Jesus. Say Jesus. Say in Jesus' name. He loves to hear from us. And, and he's coming. I mean, we've got so much evidence looking at the world. It's not going to go on much longer. People are killing each other for no reason. And they don't care if they get in trouble. So... I mean, it, it's exciting. We're finally going to get to meet Jesus face to face. Our loving God. We're going to get to see his eyes, how much he loves us. And he loves us a lot. He laid down his life for us and then took it back up. No one took it from him. He laid it down for us and took it back up. To save us. And we're about to be face to face with him. And see him every day, forever. Just like the four blood moons, Jesus sent us a message. They happen on Passover, Tabernacle, Passover, Tabernacle. Back to back, two years back to back. Basically, Jesus was saying, my wrath is going to pass you over because you are going to Tabernacle with me forever. My wrath is going to pass you over because you are going to tabernacle with me forever. He's telling us that with his, his feast days, his four blood moons. And that's why I think it's tabernacle. And here's another interesting fact. Israel finished their feast. So everyone thinks they got another year. I don't believe you got another year. They think, oh, Jesus won't come back for another year. No. Nope. Israel finished their feast. And now everyone thinks we've got another year. No, I don't believe it's another year. And that's another reason why we should keep watch. And why there was out of the 10 virgins, five were ready, five weren't. Five went back to sleep. You know, everyone thinks they got another year because, you know, and also you got to think about this. When Jesus does finally come back, on one of his feasts, which I do believe it will be his feast. I believe it's tabernacle. I mean, don't you think he would decide when his feast is? He's the only one. Jesus has the authority. To, I mean, we're talking about the rapture of the church, the body of Christ. Don't you think it would be his authority to decide when his feasts are? He's not going to let man decide like Israel. 
They're not going to decide when his feast is, especially a feast that he's coming back on to get his children. It's going to be his authority. Jesus is going to decide. So for everyone that thinks they got another year, I think, you're, I think it's wrong. It's not another year. It's, it's now. It's not another year. And Israel's got leap years. Um, basically, they add a month. And I heard they call it the pregnant year. It's, it's, it's a pregnant year when they add it an extra day, an extra month. You know. So I just pray we bind up those demons that because I know they're real active right now. In Jesus' name, they don't have any authority or power to mess with, with Christians with God's children because they know their time is short. I just bind them up in Jesus' name that any any thing they try to do to come against God's children, the body of Christ, will, will fail. And it will it'll come in their face, the demon's face. And whatever they try won't work. And I bind them up in Jesus' name. And that to protect all of God's children in Jesus' name. That whatever the demons convince people to do, it won't work against God's children. I just I bind them up in Jesus' name. That the demons, that that all the people that come against God's children will, will have no power against his children. And his children will be safe in Jesus' name. All of God's children. In Jesus' name. And let your kingdom come and you will be done on earth and heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a good day. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.